Welcome back to Homestead Dreamers. I'm Elena and today I'm going to share with you why we homestead. I didn't grow up on a farm or homestead and I honestly didn't even know what homesteading was until a few years ago. I grew up in the suburbs and there wasn't a large agricultural community around us so it was just not something that I was exposed to at a young age. That being said, I was extremely interested in sustainability. Even from a young age, I was obsessed with recycling or creating things out of things that were used. I even did presentations on recycling in high school, things like that. But as I got older, I struggled to figure out how to express my passion and interest for sustainability. And I kind of just let it go by the wayside. You know, I would change small things in my lifestyle to be more sustainable, whether that's thrifting for clothes or buying organic products. I did some of those things, but it still just didn't feel very fulfilling for me. In 2019 is when things started to change. So I had met Alex in college at Penn State University main campus, and we moved back to his hometown and had already been living in a very rural area for two years at this point. But in 2019, what happened was I came across a very unsettling video about the Fairlife milk scandal. And I don't know if you've ever seen this video or even heard about it. A lot of people haven't even heard about it. So I don't know how this fell into my lap. I don't know if someone sent it to me, if I saw it on the news, but regardless, I watched this video and I was so upset after I watched it that I knew something had to change. So basically what happens in the video, I'm not going to give any details, but there are just some disturbing scenes of them abusing animals or just really not ethical practices for raising animals happening in these videos. All I knew though was that I felt so unsettled and after I watched the video, I was sitting there crying, like sobbing. It wasn't just like tears, I was sobbing. And the reason why I was crying is because I felt responsible for the pain that those animals were enduring. I thought in that moment in time, I need to do better and realized that I had a huge gap in my knowledge of where my food comes from. I had never once bought Fairlife milk in my life, but in that moment in time, I felt so guilty. I felt like I went to the grocery store, just bought the cheapest chicken on the shelves or the cheapest eggs without even thinking about what it took to get that chicken or those eggs to my table. And it was that moment that like flipped a switch for me. And within a week, we were buying our meat locally. I'm thankful that that experience happened to me and that I did have that trigger that kind of switched in my brain. But as soon as that happened, like I said, I realized I had this gap in knowledge. So I spent a lot of time researching our food system, understanding where our food comes from, understanding more about agriculture, how animals are raised in a factory setting, and just kind of learning all of those things. I realized I need to either buy locally or grow or raise those animals myself. And the driving factor behind that is that I wanted to ensure that the food that we were eating and providing our family with was not only grown sustainably or raised sustainably, but also ethically. That has been kind of the driving force behind our homestead. So like I said, right after this happened, I spent a ton of time researching. I found two local farms that raise animals on pasture. And if you are in this place where you're looking for farm fresh meat. Uh, I would highly suggest that you look for animals that are raised on pasture and then also go to the farm, ask questions, understand how they're raised, meet the farmer, ask, like I said, a lot of questions and make sure that it's the right decision for you. We are really lucky to be in a rural area where we have multiple options. If you are in an urban or suburban area, you may not have as many options. But like I said, there's two specific farms that we purchase from and we purchase our meat in bulk from them. So you can purchase meat in like a quarter cow, a half cow. 
You could purchase a half cow and then split it between family members. This is the most economical way to purchase. It's kind of inconvenient and convenient at the same time. The inconvenience being that you only have so many cuts of meat and then the convenience being that you never need to go to the grocery store to get that meat because it's in your freezer. It also could be inconvenient if you don't currently have a place to store that much meat so you would have to procure something to store that. So at the same time that we decided to switch our meat source over to local, we also were planning our first garden. And I decided that my first garden was gonna be starting those plants from seed. So I had a large learning curve right at the beginning, but it all worked out and I ended up having a pretty good harvest that first year. And that's basically kind of how we got into homesteading at the very beginning. So we were buying meat locally and then growing some of our food. As we continued on the journey, we realized that we wanted to raise some of our own animals. And I don't know if you've heard this saying before, but some people say that chickens are the gateway animal. <laughs> I don't know where this came from or who came up with that first, but I totally agree with that. A lot of people who are interested in raising animals or expanding beyond the garden end up raising chickens. And so we knew that we wanted to raise laying hens. And so I started doing a ton of research on raising laying hens. And one thing I realized is that we might end up with a rooster. And if we end up with a rooster, we have to figure out what we're gonna do with that rooster. In the videos that I had watched at the time, they said you could like auction off the rooster, you could rehome the rooster, or you could process the rooster. And I'm not a farm girl. I didn't grow up around butchering animals or even hunting or any of those things. And so the idea of processing an animal kind of freaked me out. And so I was like, okay, well, I have to, we're gonna have to make an educated decision on this if this does happen. There's no guarantee that's gonna happen, but we have to be prepared for it. It just so happened that one of the farms that we buy our meat from was also holding a chicken processing class. And this was the fall before we got our chickens. And I decided that we were going to take that class. I told Alex, I said, we need to go take this class. We need to understand where our food comes from. We need to be prepared to raise these chickens and make an educated decision in the chance that we get a rooster. So we took this processing class and there were only about nine people at the class. And I am a very sensitive person, <laughs> especially when it comes to animals. I absolutely love animals, every type of animal that there is. I do eat meat, but I also love animals. And so whenever the hard part came during the course, I cried like a baby. I literally was hysterically crying around a bunch of strangers and the farmers were so sweet. They were so understanding, we were very comforting saying, you know, we gave this chicken the best life that we could, you know, all of these really nice reassuring things. And at the end of the day, I was able to compose myself and go through with the course and I did end up participating in the processing and I felt afterwards a connection with food that I had never felt before. In that moment, I felt like all of the dots connected and that it finally clicked. And I felt a deep sense of purpose and understanding of knowing exactly where my food came from. And so from that, I knew that this was gonna be the start of our homesteading journey, that having a garden and raising lane hens was only the beginning of what we were going to get into. Fast forward to spring of 2020, we got our first chicks and what do you know, we ended up with three roosters. I think we had ordered eight or nine hens, ended up with three roosters. And if you don't know anything about chickens, one thing that you'll learn is that you need to have a certain ratio of hens to roosters in order to make sure that the hens don't get stressed out by the roosters and then also that the roosters don't fight one another. So we had these three roosters and we had to figure out what we were gonna do with them. We ultimately decided we were going to process them. And I honestly don't think we could have made that decision so confidently if we hadn't taken a course ahead of time to help us through those emotions, mainly me, and help us figure out you know, what, what this means to us and what we truly want for our homestead. So if you are in a place where 
you're kind of just starting your homestead and you're thinking about raising chickens, I highly encourage you to check out local farms and see if you could take some type of processing class or maybe if you already have a friend who's into homesteading and is gonna be processing some chickens, maybe ask them if you could come and join and be a part of it. That, like I said, really helped me with that connection with food and also with making some of those decisions. It's getting cold out here though. Let's grab a tea and then head inside and continue talking. Before we go inside, I just need to show you how ridiculous I look in these insulated overalls. They are a little bit big on me. I bought the size up because I wanted to be able to move in them, but they are a lifesaver and I highly recommend investing in some. All right, I got my cup of honey lavender tea. Let's go sit inside. The funny thing is that I am a coffee person and drinking tea for me is currently pretty hard, but I know that we can grow our own herbs and things to put in the tea. So I'm trying to become more of a tea person. Come here, Bob. Okay, you're gonna get to meet Georgie. Woo! Can you come here? Can you come here and say hi? Are you excited, boy? Are you an excited boy? No one can see you because you're so dark. Move over to my right. People can't see you. Oh, okay, there we go. Oh, too excited. I have to share what's on my mug. It says Elena's potting shed on one side and then the other side it says, I will be in my office. This was gifted to me and it's honestly one of my favorite mugs now. I drink out of it all the time. One of the coolest things about homesteading is that everyone has a different way that they find homesteading and in a different path that they take once they find it. And homesteading looks different for everyone. So for some people, it's primarily preserving food or homemaking where other people homesteading is hardcore, raising all of the animals, having milking cows, raising goats, all the things. And it really just depends on what your interests are. So if you are at the stage where you're thinking about homesteading or maybe wanting to start homesteading, I would encourage you to think about the things that you're most interested in. So if for instance, you are most interested in bees and plants, maybe you should start with a garden and then get into beekeeping as well. If you're someone who enjoys cooking, it might make sense for you to start with preserving food rather than growing it. And you could do that by buying things in bulk at a local farmer's market and then preserving that food for your family. Those are just a couple of thoughts that I have about starting your homestead is to stick with the things that you're most interested in. It can be really easy when you start homesteading to wanna to try all of the things and then you find yourself feeling really exhausted or burnt out or that maybe you just don't have time for other things in your life, like even just hanging out with friends and family. So if you take it slower and kind of focus on the things you're most interested in, I think it's a smoother journey. And that's kind of how we have approached it. We primarily have focused on our garden and laying hens. We've done some preserving, but nothing to the extent of what a lot of people do. Those are things that we have interest in, but we're just not to that point in our journey yet. I kind of want to circle back to talking about the sustainability side of homesteading. This is something that I don't think people talk enough about but it is so interesting and intriguing and really cool because you can basically make all of your own soil on your property, then buy some seeds, grow plants, you can harvest some of those plants, but then you can also harvest seeds from those plants. And then next year you can plant those seeds and provide your own soil. Then you have this sustainable process where you're providing for yourself and all of the waste that you produce, AKA the dead plants or rotten tomatoes, those can all go back into your compost bin and then go back into the soil eventually once they're composted. I think that's so cool because homesteading is essentially living sustainably. And that's one of the reasons why I've been able to dive headfirst into it and get so into it because like I said at the beginning, I've been passionate about sustainability my whole life, but I just didn't know how to express that passion. And now that I've found homesteading, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is my dream life. This is exactly what I've always wanted. I feel a lot less anxious because I don't have to make challenging decisions of like, what do I do if I buy salad greens that are packaged in plastic? What happens to that plastic then? Those things used to stress me out, 
but if I grow the things myself, I don't have to worry about discarding of those plastic or packaging materials and it just is a lot better process for me in general. Part of the reason why I wanted to share our why of why we homestead is because I think that having a why on why you homestead is really important because you have that to circle back to on the days when things are hard. So there's definitely gonna be times where you're extremely busy, you can barely fit everything into your schedule, maybe all of your tomatoes are ripening at the same time and you need to get them preserved, but you're feeling really stressed out. And I think in those moments, we need to go back to that why and remember why we decided to go down this path and what this journey means for us. And for Alex and I, I know I've talked a lot about my opinion on things, but Alex feels very similarly about the sustainability side and the ethical side. For us, we know that our drive and our passion comes from living more sustainably and being able to give animals the best life that we can. So that's kind of our why, but like I said, I think it's important that you can have that defined and be able to circle back when you need it. Now, if you're in a place where maybe you aren't sure you want to homestead or you're not ready to homestead, but you want to live more sustainably, I would recommend starting to buy things locally, both your meat and your produce, and then also eating more seasonally. So eating seasonally is just as important as buying locally because if you ever think you are going to get into homesteading, you have to understand that things aren't ripe all year round and that things are available at different parts of the season. For example, broccoli, cauliflower, and kale are considered to be cool weather crops. So those are gonna be some of your first things that are gonna be ready to harvest. Whereas tomatoes and peppers take a lot longer First of all, you plant them outside later in the season because they need warm temperatures and then they're not ready to harvest until the end of the season. Part of homesteading is also learning to eat seasonally. And it's always interesting now that I'm in this lifestyle when I go to the grocery store and I see ripe tomatoes at this time of year because in our area, tomatoes wouldn't, wouldn't be growing. And so when I see those tomatoes, it almost grosses me out. And I don't know if any other homesteaders get like this, but when I see those tomatoes, I'm like, ugh, I can just imagine what that tastes like in comparison to my garden tomato and it's not nearly as good, so I can't even buy it. <laughs> the version of tomatoes that we're typically eating during this time of year are canned or stewed tomatoes. And we put those in chilies and other dishes. We're not just eating a can of tomatoes on our salad or anything, but we're putting those in meals and that's how we're eating them. So it's just kind of funny how once you get into the lifestyle, some of your habits kind of adjust too, where you're like, oh, I, I can't even get myself to buy that from the store because it's not gonna taste nearly as good as what it does from the garden. I think that's all I had to say in today's video. I want to thank you for hanging out with me and I'll catch you on the next one.